Hey everybody, a lot of people we realize don't realize how to properly use the reverse tracking on our fastback frame. So we want to make sure you're getting the most out of your machine. So let's go over some key setup things that get missed sometimes real quick. Let me get an attachment. A freshie? A freshie? Yeah, I love it. One of the first things is a lot of people never set their accessory arm up to be uh, get proper belt centering for their machine. So your accessory arm is designed to allow you to adjust your accessory in and out so that your belt is centered on your tracking wheel at the same time it's centered on your um, accessories. Make sure you watch our motor alignment video and uh, I'll put a link to it somewhere. Let's do it right, right here. Once your motor is aligned, throw a belt on. Watch our belt tension video here. So we're going to start running and forward first. We're gonna get the belt centered up on the on the platen. And then we're gonna look at where the belt's running on the tracking wheel. Well, this one was really good. Let's purposefully make it wrong. So as you can see, when I've got the belt centered on the platen it's running off to the right side of the tracking wheel. So that tells me that the platen is too far to the right. We would adjust our shaft collar away from the arm, the amount that we want to come in, and then slide it in up against that new position and test it out there. Recenter the belt on your platen. Now we're looking good. Once you get it running good and forward, then you can switch over to uh, trying it in reverse, one thing at a time. Once you're running in reverse, if you've done a good job of alignment, you won't have to make too dramatic of a change. Um, the problem is a lot of people go right back up to the tracking knob up top on their tracking wheel, understandably, but that is not um, an effective method for tracking the belt in reverse. We'll just show you that as I crank this, I crank really hard and the wheel's getting way leaned and it's not responding very well up front for the amount of input I'm having to put in. And um, it's putting my wheels at extreme angles that are gonna wear out um, my crowns prematurely. So the better way of adjusting the tracking is with this knob back here on the motor mount. That knob tilts your entire motor mount. So do not tighten the bolts down and lock your motor mount when you get it. These bolts right here are intended to be loose. The lock nuts will keep them from coming any more loose. Um, they're minimally tightened during setup so that this black piece is free to slide on this blue piece. So. As I crank this tracking knob back here and I tilt the motor, you'll see the belt respond nice and predictably. And I can get that wherever I want it. Just bring it right back to center. If you look back here, same as the motor alignment video, the top of the black and the top of the blue on these bent flanges should be pretty close to even on both sides. They can deviate a little bit, that's the point of the adjustment. Um, you're going to use that knob to tilt it, so they're not going to match perfectly, but um, if you're having to crank it way too far, I would go back to the alignment video and get reset running forward, get everything tracking straight so that you don't have to go to extreme wheel angles 
to get your belt where you want it because that's going to cause premature wheel wear and cause some unpredictable belt motion. So hope that's helpful. Reverse tracking is a super useful feature on the machine that you'll use for all sorts of things. Safe uh, hollow finishing with um, surface conditioning belts, sharpening using our hollow grinding jig, um, and more things to come in the future. So uh, let us know in the comments if you've been doing that properly or if uh, we uh, dropped the ball in getting that information out there too late. Everybody subscribe and we will uh, see you in the next one. Uh, all right, cool.